So with that, I thought I'd clarify um, hidden uh, demand and supply. So um, just quickly, uh, I guess many of you know, if you have, if you don't know, I don't really want to go over the course material again, because the video is there, right? But um, one of the things I think that, um, the, well, one of the questions that I asked yesterday was whether the, this, um, this zone here was considered hidden supply. And it is, it can be, and the way that I'm going to put, I'm going to put it is, is that, and I think I, even, I think I'd kind of say it in my, in, in the course as well, but technically, technically it is considered hidden supply, right? In so far as, and the way that we draw hidden supply is where you've got a, a, a basically end, what's known as an outside candle. So you've got an outside candle where the high goes above the previous candles high, and then it closes below the previous candles low, right? Now, there's this in this scenario though, we have actually an obvious bullish candle. So with this bullish candle, although yes, technically those are the rules for a hidden supply, yeah, it's not hidden. It's not hidden because even if you didn't know that was hidden supply, in the way that we draw, you know, supply and demand zones with lower highs and lower lows, yeah, yeah then you would still have you you would definitely still have drawn that supply zone yeah and because it was obvious to see right so it's not really hidden although the rules do say that it is hidden and whether you call it hidden or not really doesn't matter simply because you would have spotted it anyway right now what we do have is a situation where and it's, let's let's go into you know a different situation right so in this one right where we have bearish candles and then we also have the um oh sorry i you know what i didn't um in the last sorry in the last in that last screen where i was drawing hidden demand did you you guys didn't see what i was drawing did you did you guys see what i was drawing no all right sorry let me just explain that again then sorry apologies um i was using a different drawing tool um so so when it comes to hidden um uh supply this area here, right? What you've got is the rules state that hidden supply, you have to have like an outside candle, right? An outside candle is basically a candle that engulfs the previous candles high or low, right? And closes below the previous candles low or high in, for example, a demand zone, right? So it totally engulfs the previous candles high and uh, low price. That's basically it. Yeah. Now, hidden supply. Um, that's the that's the technical definition of it. Now, in this scenario, you have a bullish candle, which is basically obvious for everyone to see. So when we're looking at plotting supply zones, let's say we would still have drawn that area of supply because it was visible. Right. That's just how we draw, you know, lower highs and lower lows when we know, you know, that the bullish candle is the pullback, et cetera, right? So the question, as again, or well, I say the, the, um, the nuance, I guess, is this, is technically, yes, that is hidden demand, but it's not hidden, even if you didn't know what hidden demand or hidden supply, sorry, was simply because you would still have drawn your supply zone from there to there. Does that make sense, guys? Even if you didn't know that was considered hidden supply, that would still be a supply zone that you would have drawn. It wouldn't have been anything that actually is, is hidden. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you'll get that. Yeah. So you can classify it as hidden supply. Technically, I'm not saying that you're wrong if you if, if you if you did still technical, you know, class that as technical, but you would have marked out. Ken says you would have marked out the wick instead of the candle. Right. OK. So what Ken is, I think we're referring to is this, right? Is again, probably from the, from the wick. So from, from around here, or in fact, it would really be the open, right? Of that level there. So that would also be considered again, a zone, right? From there to there, yeah? Um, and again, 
you can draw it like that. But there are times, there are times where you may, you know, if you if you do get a scenario like this, price may not come up to here. And then we could get, for example, prices may come up that high and you could miss out on this trade. So for me, I personally, over the years, I've kind of adjusted it and I don't think I've updated the course, but, um, or that part of the course anyway. But generally, if I see a bullish candle before an outside candle, I will just, generally tend to draw the zone from that bullish candle open to encompass that because as i said before i don't know if i'm drawing it really from a from a from the open of that uh, candlestick you know and just just basically from the wick i don't know whether prices may come up to that zone and this could be a very valid trade before prices go to the downside does that make sense ken Yeah, and this says it's standard supply. Yeah, and that's why, I, and that's and that's why I just say, do you know what? It's best if you just call that just standard supply. If you've got that bullish candlestick right there before you get the outside candle, or what I would know, I know to be a, a what's known as a capture a capture pain candle, then just draw it from there. Yeah, but in this scenario, for example, in this scenario, uh, one second. It's slightly different simply because the, the, the previous engulf or the engulfing candle engulfs, yeah. And let me draw a different color for the pen. All right. The candle engulfs the previous candle that was actually bearish, that closed bearish, right? Now that would be hidden because ultimately what we know to be lower highs and lower lows like that is that high, that move to the upside is represented by generally a bullish candle right a bullish daily candle before it makes the lower low right but in this scenario you would miss this because the wick of the engulfing candle goes above the previous candle and then closes below the previous candle's low so again you would miss this because if you're waiting for a bullish candle to, to tell you where there is a um, a, uh, um, a lower high than a lower low, yeah, you might miss this or you definitely will miss it. And I'm going to show you an example of that, right? You're going to miss this uh, hidden supply area because ultimately, what is this? This is, if, you, if you're, if you're, if you're uh, drawing this out, one second, let me guess, get a black marker right so let's just follow this out right so prices started from here probably went higher lower higher right next candle higher lower throughout the day than there so you can start to see it's making you know some some lower highs yeah but not enough demand there's not enough demand in that for for it to really be considered lower highs of course if you go down to a lower time frame then cool there, there would be you know pullbacks right but we want significant demand or a significant lower high in order to consider that or supply to be considered you know um, a, a zone worth taking right so this is making micro uh i guess lower highs and lower lows right but then you get something where you get this and it goes above the previous candles there, then comes back down. That, right, could have been considered in, in real time as well. You think about what this candle actually was. Yeah, think about what this candle actually was. And let me just get a, uh, a green and let me get a square, right? So in real time, before this candle closed, and imagine this is a daily time frame chart, right? At some point, this candle looked very bullish. That wick represents a bullish candle, right? Everyone agree with that? Yep, that would have been bullish. And then what happens is it evaporates, yeah? And then turns bearish. Yeah, turns bearish. Oops, sorry. Well, then turns bearish by the end of the day. So for me, this becomes hidden because there was definitely 
it was definitely bullish and then created that bearish candle. So there was a lot of supply that came in, so much supply that during the day, even though it was a bullish day and it closed, it went above, I said it closed, but it went above the previous day's high. There was so much supply that came in that it pushed prices, you know, down beyond the previous day's close, right? Which is, again, both significant. So that becomes hidden supply because on a, on a price chart, most traders wouldn't see that. Yeah, they would not see that. And here's an example of this, right? When I, I do hidden demand, right? So hidden demand is where I think it was Rishi, right? So <laughs> Rishi said to me, um, is Rishi in here, by the way? Is he in here? Uh, oh, he's not here. But Rishi said he marked out the... Um, you know, this chart that I'd put, and he said basically that, um, you know, he thought that uh, that uh, demand should have been from, you know, wherever he's drawing it from. Now, um, I would say no, right? So what Rishi didn't see was hidden demand, right? What Rishi didn't see was, was that. So from this perspective, and let me just get a green marker, right? What you've seen is... Um, well, first, well, actually, first, the first thing I want to address, the first thing I want to address is whenever you're drawing demand or supply, don't draw it from, you know, you have to draw it from the last um, uh, bearish candles open price to, you know, the swing low. So that in itself wasn't, you know, is not is not where you should draw it from. But let's and then let's pretend that there wasn't hidden demand. Let's just say there was, you know, it just literally went like this and there was no hidden demand there. You would have drawn the zone really from there. That's where you would have drawn it from. Yeah. But in this scenario, the last push before prices make a new high, yeah, is here. Yeah. And it's because technically prices go below the previous candles low and then they close above the previous candles high. Yeah. So they close up here. So technically, this is the last demand zone that pushed prices higher. Yeah. So and it also engulfs the, the previous candle, which was actually a bullish candle close as well. Yeah. So you want to draw it from the wick down to the low. And that is hidden demand. Yeah. So it was so well hidden. Rishi didn't see it. And a lot of traders don't see that. Right. They don't see that there is actually demand in that area there. 